What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out a brand new lightweight budget gaming mouse that is actually very impressive for the price. We're going to take a look at the new SteelSeries Rival 3, a $30 mouse. So if you're in the market for a new gaming mouse or you just don't want to break the bank, got you guys covered today. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. So first up in this trend of lightweight mice, this doesn't really even advertise itself as such. However, coming in at just 77 grams, I'd say it still falls under that category. So it's nice to see Seal Series was able to cut down on the overall weight without actually putting holes in the shell. Now the fact that it's only $30 is just a big win for consumers because a budget friendly mouse that is light on the wallet and in the hands is only gonna push the rest of the market forward. So when you get it in, you get it unboxed. My first impression was that it's just really sleek and it is smaller than I thought it would be. The body is a matte black plastic and it consists of six total buttons to its ambidextrous design. And although we have two side buttons, it's obviously more suited for right-handed users. As for its dimensions, it comes in at 120.6 millimeters long, 58.3 millimeters wide at the front, and 67 millimeters at its widest point at the butt, stands 37.9 millimeters tall at its highest point, and is 21.5 millimeters tall at the front of the scroll wheel. I think keeping that in mind, it's gonna be best suited for claw or fingertip grips, also depending on your hand size. But longtime SteelSeries fans are gonna be pretty familiar with the company's design language over the years. And then for a quick visual comparison, here's how it stacks up to other popular lightweight ambi mice out there, like the MM710, Model O Minus, G Wolves Hottie, and the Viper Ultimate. Now I said before, my first impression was that it's sleek. All the grooves are ergonomic by definition. And even though we use the term ergo when talking about the actual shape, by literal definition of the word, it fits this mouse to a T. The side buttons do sit flush against the side, which did take me a while to get used to. Moving on, the textured scroll wheel here does have noticeable tactile steps, and it is pretty silent overall and muted, I'd say, when it comes to the sound. It doesn't feel mushy or anything like that, but it's also not the sharpest feeling click either. I'll quiet it down real quick so you could hear, but we'll do a sound test. Left and right clicks. And the side buttons. And then flipping the belly up, we could see it's smiling at us. Now you can't see it. But inside the mouse is a new SteelSeries and Pixar optical sensor, which is their True Move Core. This is the first SteelSeries mouse to feature this particular sensor, but it's pretty much their version of the PMW3331. The sensor does also help save some money in terms of production costs, as it's a 100 to 8500 CPI range, so we don't have those unnecessary options set this to like 20,000 DPI. 8500 should be you know, more than enough for most people. As for the feet here, nothing like hyperglides or anything. It is your traditional Teflon material, and they have these kind of cutouts underneath the feet, as you can see, which you can use to easier you know, pry those feet off if you want to swap them out, replace them in the future, or also just remove them to have access to the screws if you want to do some internal modding. On my Mad Cats Glide 38, which is a rubberized hybrid mouse pad, as you'd expect, this makes anything feel like it's on ice. Very little resistance overall, which is good. Feels nice on here. And then to your traditional cloth mouse pad, pretty much same story very smooth, glides without a hiccup, but this obviously would benefit from hyperglides. But what I think is more important here is the cable. It doesn't have a fancy name, it's not a paracord, it's not braided, it's rubber as you can see, but it still offers a lot of flexibility. When you hold the cable near the tip of the mouse, you want to see the level of resistance or if it budges or pushes back. So when holding the cable, say four or five inches away from the tip of the mouse and you push it and the mouse itself doesn't move, that's a good thing. That means when you're gaming, the cable itself isn't gonna push back or offer any negative resistance. Again, would this benefit from a paracord or something lighter if you wanted to maybe swap this out in the future? Yes, of course. But the fact that it's still very flexible on a mouse at this price point is very impressive. So when gaming, it just feels very natural in the hand. It doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel like a $30 mouse, which is the overall big takeaway, I'd say. At 77 grams, it's pretty much on par with my main mouse, the Viper Ultimate. So there wasn't a big transition period or anything to get used to it. I played at 600 DPI, I mean CPI, and I got to share some snipes with the Discord fam. I hear him down there. Oh, oh, 
Now headed to their Steel Series 3 software, it's pretty straightforward and all laid out right in front of you, which I like. There's not endless amounts of tabs where things are hidden. Here you can reassign the mouse buttons to macros you create. You can adjust the pulling rate, angle snapping, which I wouldn't touch, acceleration, deceleration, and your CPI levels. By default, there are two saved to the mouse, but you can obviously add more up to five levels and it actually has onboard storage. You can just keep them all saved to the mouse itself. Again, ranging from 100 to 8,500, the increments are also adjustable in levels of 100. So keep that in mind. You can't have like 550, for example. And then yes, illumination for the RGB lights, because as you saw, it has RGB built in. There are three different zones technically, so you could just select them, pick what kind of the colors you want for the some of the presets or determine your own colors you want that you can add to the color wheel up top. This is like your pretty much just regular gradient effect that you would see transitions through the three, depending on the zones you have selected. It'll all change accordingly. There's also some other things you could pick from, pretty limited in terms of the effects, but it's really not a big deal. You also have the breathing mode, which is, you know, colors breathing from a color to black. Also can change up what that color is, obviously. If you want, you could just disable the color altogether if you don't want any lights on. Or you can pick it to be a steady color just for, you know, one static effect. And it's gonna be the pretty much the same thing in terms of the zones. Say you want the, the front half or the top two zones to be one color and the other zone a different color, you can do that to kind of make a pretty unique color transition. Again, it's static, so it's not gonna be distracting or anything, but you can then assign the zone to a different effect if you want. So you could have just the front of the mouse a certain color, the middle zone doing some RGB effect, and then a different color for the third zone. So you have that customization, which is pretty cool. And the lights are actually decently bright here, but as far as I can tell in the software, there is no brightness level adjustment. So if you want it to be dimmer, you just have to go to the color wheel and pick a darker gradient of that color. So all things considered, for $30, this is very impressive. Can I nitpick some things? Yes, I would have loved some hyperglide sort of fee or something. I would recommend possibly, you know, swapping the cable out, even though it's very flexible and stuff. Obviously, it would benefit from a lighter cable and stuff. I do wish the, uh, the clicks were a little bit more tactile, but in the grand scheme of things, for $30, none of those are a deal breaker. When you're talking budget gaming mice, there's a lot of options out there, a lot of knockoff options on Amazon, but you really cannot beat this. Everything that they're offering here is really unparalleled on the market. We saw Model O kind of, you know, break the ground then in the summertime and put out a $50 lightweight mouse. So for here, a $30 mouse that is, you know, a bit set back in terms of features and stuff, for anybody looking to save money, pick up a brand new gaming mouse and you're on a budget, don't have a lot to spend, $30 is, uh, it's hard to say no to this. So really impressed what SteelSeries did here with the Rival 3. Can't recommend it enough if you're on a budget. If you wanna check it out, like I said, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. But that'll wrap it up for my review. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up, show your support, hope it helped you out. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you all enjoyed, have a good day.